Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to talk specifically about S3 storage classes, touching on topics that include storage class definitions, description of each storage class, object durability and availability, and how to change between storage classes. So let's first define what storage classes are. And a storage class represents the classification assigned to each object in S3. Available storage classes include standard, reduced redundancy, or RRS, infrequent access, or S3IA, and Glacier. Each storage class has varying attributes that dictate things like storage cost, object availability, object durability, and frequency of access to the object. Each object must be assigned a storage class, and standard is set as the default storage class. You can change the storage class of an object at any time. Well, for the most part, but I'll get into that shortly. So anytime that you upload an object to S3, you should be thinking to yourself, hmm, which storage class is right for me? And that's what we're going to talk about in the rest of this lesson. So for the four storage classes, let's go through specifically the details of each. First, standard, and this is designed for general all-purpose storage. It is the default storage option of S3, meaning that when you upload an object to S3, unless you deliberately change it during the upload process to a different storage class, it will be uploaded as standard storage class. Now, to view the storage class of any particular object, just click into a bucket, and if you look at an object right here under storage class, you're going to see the storage class classification. So continuing on, standard has an object durability of what is referred to as 11 nines, which is because there is 11 nines in their percentage. Also for object availability, that is set at 99.99%, and standard is the most expensive of the various storage classes. Now, if you don't know what object durability and object availability are, we're going to get to that in the next slide. For reduced redundancy storage, this is designed for non-critical reproducible objects. And you'll notice it has a much lower object durability, but the same object availability. And it is less expensive than the standard storage class. So you're getting a cheaper storage class, but you're giving up some of your object durability. For infrequent access, this is designed for objects that you do not access frequently, but when you do need to access that object, it must be immediately available. And this has the same durability as standard in that it has 11 nines durability, but the object availability is slightly lower at 99.9% .9 as opposed to 99.99%. .99 and this is, again, even more less expensive than the standard or RRS storage class. Lastly, we have Glacier, and this is designed for long-term archival storage. And this is a very special type of storage class in that if you store files in Glacier, first off, it is extremely cheap, just a few cents per gigabyte of storage, and it has exceptional durability but if you want to retrieve objects stored in the Glacier storage class, you have to put in a request and it may take several hours to a day in order to retrieve those files. So it's only good for archival storage for objects that you're almost never going to have to retrieve. And if you do have to retrieve them, you are okay with waiting at least a few hours. So, Next, let's talk about object durability and object availability. These are very important concepts when talking about S3 objects. So object durability is the percent over a one year time period that a file stored in S3 will not be lost. In other words, for object durability of 11 nines, that means that there is a 0.00000001% chance that a file stored in S3 at 11.9's durability will be lost in a year. Or we can look at it this way, if you have 10,000 files stored in S3 at 11.9's durability, then you can expect to lose one file every 10 million years. 
So object durability has to do with a file being lost or corrupt. The higher the durability, the better the chances are that a file stored in S3 will never be corrupt or never be lost. Next is object availability, and this is the percent over a one year time period that a file stored in S3 will be accessible. Now, for object availability of 99.99%, that means that there is a 0.01% chance that you won't be able to access a file stored in S3 within a given year, or for every 10,000 hours, you can expect a total of one hour for which a file may not be available to access. And I know I'm kind of interchanging the word file and object here. I just do that a lot myself. But when I say file, I mean object. When I say object, I mean file. They're terms that you can use synonymously with each other. But what's important to know about these two terms is that object availability has to do with me accessing this file, meaning that when I click on it, is it accessible? Can I download it? Can I modify it? Can I access the file? Durability has to do with the file actually being there. Is it lost? Is it corrupt? Has it been deleted somehow? That's the difference between durability and availability. And obviously one of the main benefits of using S3 is it's extremely high durability and availability. And this goes into AWS's claim of always having highly available and fault tolerant systems. So highly available and highly fault tolerant. That's the way you should think about these two terms. So let's take a closer look at actually changing or modifying the storage class of a file. So again, by default, all new objects uploaded to S3 are set to standard storage class by default. So Project Omega File 1 set to standard. And if you look at Project Omega File 2, that is also set to standard. So if we want new objects, new objects to have a different storage class, then you need to set the proper settings prior to or during the upload process. And you can do this by either setting another storage class during the upload process, and I'll show you an example of that in a second, or using object lifecycle policies. And we're gonna cover that in the next lesson. But let's take a look at uploading another object and how to set a different storage class during the upload process. So if I click on upload and I select a file and I'll select the same file again, I'm not gonna upload it this time, but I'll show you how to do this. Instead of hitting start upload right away, if I select set details here, I can choose a different storage class. So if I now click start upload, it will upload and set the infrequent access storage class as the storage class for that file during the upload process. Next, for the following storage classes being standard, reduced redundancy, and infrequent access, you can manually switch the object storage class amongst them at any time by changing the storage class in the object's properties. So if I click on this object, click on properties, go to details here, make sure that that's open, I can select standard, infrequent access, or reduce redundancy by simply clicking save, and I can hit refresh here, and we see that that is now switched to reduced redundancy. This can also be done to a folder. If I click on a folder, click on properties, I can change, let's change this to infrequent access, I can click save, and then any objects within the folder will be changed. Now, it doesn't set that as the default for the folder, meaning if I now were to upload another file into this folder, it would take on whatever properties I set during the upload process. But if there is a folder and I just wanna change everything at once for a one-time shot, then I can do that by changing the storage class on the folder level. Now, last, let's talk about Glacier because that was left out of this section here where we're able to manually change. To move an object to Glacier storage class, you need to use object life cycles. You cannot manually switch an object storage class to Glacier. And the change to Glacier may take one or two days to take effect, as where when I manually switch these between these three storage classes, the effect was immediate. And we're gonna get into object life cycles in the next lesson and where we're going to go into that in detail. 
Now, circling back around to the storage classes, given now that we have a better understanding of object durability and object availability, let's just talk about some reasons why you may choose to use these different storage classes for particular objects that you may have. So standard having the high level of object durability and high level of availability should be used for either objects that you are frequently accessing. So they may be work files that you are accessing continuously on a daily basis or files which are extremely important and need that extra level of durability so that there is more security for them to not be lost or corrupt. For reduced redundancy, this is great for backups or for files that can be reproduced. So if you have a copy of a file or let's say a thumbnail of a picture, you should use reduced redundancy because it's cheaper and if for some reason with the lower durability the file were to become lost or corrupt, you would have the original file somewhere else, probably in standard, that you can make a duplicate of and replace the lost or corrupt file in reduced redundancy. For infrequent access, this is designed for objects that you do not access frequently but must be immediately available when accessed. So what we mean by this is that it has the same level of durability as standard, meaning that the same guarantee that files will not be lost or corrupt, but if this is for files that you may access once a week or once a month, you know, files that you know you're going to have to access but not access very frequently because there is generally a cost associated each time you want to access the file. So because of that, it is less expensive, but it's only less expensive if, again, you only are accessing the file very infrequently. If you're accessing the file every day, then you certainly want the file in the standard storage class. For Glacier, this is great for large bulk archival stores. So think about a hospital that may have millions and millions of medical records that they have to keep for regulatory reasons, but a lot of those objects or files may be, you know, 10, 15 years old. They may be, there may be pieces of information there that they're never going to have to access ever again. So because of that, they can put it in Glacier and get extremely cheap storage, but if for some reason they have to retrieve somebody's medical information that is 15 years old, it's not something that needs to be pulled or be available immediately because it may take several hours to retrieve that from the Glacier servers. So the trade-off there is you have to wait in order to access the file, but at the same time, the storage is extremely, extremely cheap. So that's a quick summary of storage classes, how to change between storage classes, and what object durability and availability are and how they affect how you may use the different storage classes. So with that, I will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.